Aloha tribe, I am back for an Instagram Live take two and I hope the sound is working. If anyone pops on, please let me know. This is the joys of technology. Hi everyone, I am Pink Bella from Pink Bella Aloha Therapy. Welcome, it is an Instagram Live. Uh, today I'm gonna to be sharing about the 66 gateway, about the 5D gateway and portal we just went through um, on May 29th. I assist twin flames, I assist starseeds, I assist light workers. I work with your higher self and your team of light. I also work with the 12 chakra system and bring in uh, energy and messages to balance your energy while I'm having a session. So I help people all around the world. Thank you all so, so much. Everyone who booked a session and has booked a session. I will share a little bit more about, about this at the end, but all sessions, including Akasic sessions, are still on special. I've got, I put some specials on my website on the weekend. I've extended them through this week, so you can check that out if you're interested in a session or a reading. I do have a little bit of availability still before the Solstice Gateway, which is this month, depending on your, um, your time zone, okay? So who am I? I am Pink Bella. I am a quantum healer. I work with the chakra system. Like I said, I'm a twin flame. A blue illumined twin flame and I assist with uh, balancing your energies and helping you align the union within you to help the union come together um, I did share a whole bunch of awesome information so hopefully that'll come back through again but um, I'm also a starseed and I did find out that I was a starseed first I found out that I was a starseed in the 90s I traveled to uh, the pyramids in Egypt and I had an activation at the Sphinx that wasn't planned it was me being in the right place at the right time and this massive amount of light came into my physical body and it activated a whole bunch of memories. It brought in the, uh, the Akashic memories of me being a healer of Atlantis. Uh, I became a vegetarian after that. I actually traveled after that and went and lived in Australia for a year and I remembered about crystals and Atlantis and became vegan and all of these things. The twin flame journey and reality came to me in 2010. Um, I'm one of the first waivers that started to understand about the journey and the reality of twins and the purpose. And um, it brought me deeper into more healing and uh, my soul mission and why I'm here, why I help all of you. So I've been helping twins for two years. I started helping starseeds last year. So uh, I was very uncomfortable about helping starseeds for the longest time because I didn't know that everyone was ready. You all became ready and conscious of this truly last August. The solar eclipse in August last year was a game changer for the planet. It, it tipped everyone over the edge. At a deep soul level, souls made a choice of awakening more, like a massive wave of uh, souls on the planet woke up after that. And every time we go through another new moon, full moon, and also these little mini gateways now, which are part of the event, the event officially started in March, which means that the light codes, the sacred geometry, the color frequencies that are coming on the planet and being activated within the planet, all the portals have gotten stronger. Um, we're, at the, we're at the next phase, basically. The event is the next phase of light codes coming in to awaken more souls on the planet to bring you more gifts, to bring your more of your intuitive gifts online. Hi everyone, welcome. And to, um, to bring Earth to 5D and to bring us to 5D. So uh, I've got a transmission for us all. I've got some information about what's been happening since the last video that I created. I'll talk a little bit about the 6-6 gateway and the solstice, what we can do to prepare for the solstice. Um, the, whenever, if any of you have been following me for a while or if you're new, whenever the, I'm shown to show this card, and I've been sharing this as well, a Metatron, the Diamond Light Codes, another wave started around May 29th. Thank you everyone for being here. Um, so what I do is I go through it personally and then I'm like an investigative reporter and I check in with my higher self and my team and source and it's like what's going on. So we're deeper in the photon belt. So where was I when the wave hit? Uh, I was on a train. I was actually traveling to go to this area that I like to walk, a nature trail. And I suddenly just got this slam on the left side of my head and it hurt. You know, it's like suddenly that's what will happen to some of you. You're going to suddenly have a, he a headache. It'll feel like a headache. And I was like, whoa, what was that? And I heard, oh, you just entered, a, entered where the portals opened and the wave of diamond lights coming in. So uh, it, I did adjust to it, but you know, that's kind of stuff that happens to some of you when you're driving. It's happened to me when I'm driving. You do have to pull over and rest, okay, until, until everything gets kind of calmed down. So it does calm down. So diamond light codes started on here, at least in the Pacific Northwest, 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday last week. Friday, I had to sleep and integrate. Um, and then, you know, more beautiful things happened on the weekend. This card came forward for me to show with all of you to let you know that not only are we receiving light from the great central sun and from source, but we're also um, all the portals on the planet are open. So many of you may live where there's a portal and a vortex that's open. So I'm in Vancouver, British Columbia. We have lots of them here. Um, I'm near the city now and all the whole mountain range in the ocean is a vast, vast portal. It took me years to be able to handle being here. The frequency was always so high. Um, it's, I've adjusted to it now and it's adjusted as well, but I wanted to share with you all that there has been a lot of, um, a lot more codes coming in. It's been to push up and out a lot of things. So we're having like these mini gateways before the solstice gateway. And this is to help us readjust, um, our journey. It's kind of like an eclipse basically where we're readjusting our journey so that the massive gateway isn't so overwhelming. Okay. So the solstice gateway this time last year, I was being given a gift to reconnect with my starseed family to help all of you. So if any of you, if that resonates with you being a starseed, I connect with your higher self and your starseed family to bring in information about your origins and you know, what your mission is here. There are many starseeds here on the, the planet. There's nothing to be afraid of. If you look at the big picture, everyone is energy and light and star families as well are energy and light and they're also connected to source. It's the same. I always work with teams of light, high frequency of light, because at like here on the planet, there are obviously some star systems that are more evolved consciously than others, that sort of thing. So, you know, but you as a star seed, you as a twin flame, you as a light worker chose to be here at this time to awaken, to be conscious and to help elevate yourself where you live and your, um, your journey. You know, many of you, you have, you all have a soul mission that you came here to offer and create and share. You all have belief systems that you've been releasing. Uh, some of you are yes on the twin flame journey. Some of you resonate with that term, but maybe you're being prepared for a divine partnership, or maybe you're already with somebody that you love. Um, I have had clients that have come to me saying, I really love this person, but is this person my twin flame? If you really love somebody and your that journey with that person is beautiful, enjoy it. That's your, that's a gift to you. Okay. All right. So on the weekend, because of everything that was happening, I pulled one chakra message for divine feminines and divine masculines. They were both heart based. We're doing a lot of heart healing right now. A lot of inner child work, um, both masculines and feminines, just in a little bit of a different way. Okay. But the, um, what is it? What was I going to say? Thank you everyone for being here. And oh yes, this is an Instagram live and I will be uploading it to Facebook and uh, YouTube in a little while. So masculines received the pink energy, the friendship energy. And this is inner child work, lots of inner child work and healing of wounds for divine masculines right now. And it's just their time. It's, um, it's a piece of the puzzle that many of us have been working on for years. Uh, it became very, very key part of my journey last year and for a lot of the masculines that are being prepared for unions this is the step that they're at right now okay so lots of wounding has been brought up um i woke up this morning feeling very sad i felt like it was the collective that was sad i felt like a lot of people have been uh, crying and releasing a lot of tears and uh like a roller coaster of emotions right now and i feel a lot of the masculines are are sad are in either a depression or confused and that sort of thing so lots of pink and love and i will share a little bit more about that um, as we go along okay feminines you received the raphael the green healing energy and there's that nature spending time out of nature is so key for all of us right now Nate, Gaia, many of us came here for Gaia. Gaia is giving so much to all of us and she will fully align and support you with energy, with love, anytime you need it. So um, spend as much time as you can. I love this card because it has the rainbow energy. We are receiving rainbow uh, energy from the sun as well and just being outdoors, okay? So both divine feminines and masculines heart healing right now and that's to balance us all out. Um, let me just see, let me just talk about the gateway. So I started to notice these 5D gateways the last few months. They really started in March, uh, just before the March equinox. So they are, I'm calling them 5D transitional gateways. They are to help us adjust 
for the larger gateways, for the solstice, for the equinox, so it's not too overwhelming, all right? The solstice gateway was so strong for me last year, like literally the day of the solstice, I got slammed with so much energy, it ended up staying in my back, and I ended up having to be in bed for two days. So I feel what's happened is the teams that are helping us with this ascension and with our work, they're aware that the light codes have intensified and that many of us are physically still integrating them. So we're receiving little bits and pieces um, to help us at this time. So when the huge gateway comes, we're not overwhelmed with energy and with, with symptoms, that sort of thing, okay? So the new wave of codes started coming in May 29th, 30th, um, specifically here in the Pacific Northwest. I needed a couple of days to integrate. The first thing I noticed, oh, I didn't bring a card out for that. I'll look for it. Um, there's a card that I like to show for this, so let me just find it. There, uh, the first thing that I noticed is the um, I started to be very emotional, but in a positive way. I was I would just be moved, like suddenly I looked around and everything seemed beautiful. Um, you know, it's like that. Uh, it's like an analogy of like at the Wizard of Oz when Dorothy landed in Oz and everything had been black and white up until that point, and then she opened the doors of the house and everything was these beautiful colors. I was sitting on a bench. Uh, last week. It must have been Wednesday. And uh, I was just looking at the nature and I was watching a heron and there, um, this woman was playing violin and I just started, like these tears just started coming down my eyes because everything just seemed so beautiful and so perfect. And, um, then I, and then I thought, oh, the cosmic heart is opening. So I talk about the cosmic heart and I work with this with some of you in sessions. This is my cosmic heart card that says beloved and it's got the unicorn on it. It's this energy center. It's a new energy center that opens up between the throat and the heart chakras. It is called many different things by many different people. I just call it the cosmic heart. That's what I was given. Um, it is the divine goddess, the intuitive gifts. It's your uh, higher self coming into your body. It is the connection between Atlantis and Lemuria and that aquamarine and turquoise energy. So when it opens, you will, it will feel like you're on a new planet, on a new timeline and a new reality. So that's what happened for me last week. And I was, and I thought, oh, well, this is a good crying. These are like little crocodile tears, but it was like, oh my God, everything's so beautiful. You know, so that happened last week. The cosmic heart started opening. Let me just go. I had to write down videos, or videos. I had to write down notes from everything because so much happened. Um, I started to also see different colors coming from our mountains and also um, orbs. So the orbs that I've seen the last few days, and they're, and they're getting larger and larger, uh, really vibrant purple, like I would say electric violet, uh, electric blue, magenta. Um, I have seen some rainbow ones as well, pink. And um, just like the orbs for me are just getting larger. I see them in nature. Sometimes I will see them when I walk by the water, they just appear, right? So I wanted to say like some of the new colors are coming. I And I did see aquamarine aquamarine ones like these um, and I saw that coming like when I look at the mountains sometimes I will see the colors coming from the trees and the mountains and it concurred that day when I felt the cosmic heart opening that the same color the aquamarine color was coming um, what else the then the diamond light codes I shared about this hit on Thursday or Friday at least here in the Pacific Northwest that was confirmed by magenta pixie has recently shared a video that came my way on the weekend and also uh, one of the teachers that I follow, Lisa Transcendence Brown, she's been writing a lot about the diamond codes. So I love that we are all getting our own information, um, you know, and it doesn't matter who it's coming from. It's just confirmation that many souls are receiving the same information. I was on a train, like I said, going to my nature walk to regroup, to realign. And I just felt this pressure that I was, you know, I had like something, you know, coming into my head. The diamond codes will affect the upper chakras. Um, they are rewriting our DNA, our RNA, and they're, they're rewriting um, how our, our brain and our heart and everything are functioning. So they will hit the upper chakras, okay? So that, and then we go through a physical integration. So that's what happened. And I actually then had to sleep on Friday and integrate, all right? But then I felt okay after that. So I wanted to share that with all of you. That's happening to all of us, whether divine feminines or masculines. But I did, what I did notice on the weekend was that everyone was integrating their own way of healing. So, you know, for some masculines, you're very awake. For other masculines, this is like um, can't hide from the wounds anymore. You know, we all came in to clear our Akashic records, to, which are past lives, other timelines, to release them, to heal old wounds. For twins and for divine partners that are trying to come together, many of you have either wounds together 
that are on other timelines, which is what an Akashic healing can assist with, but you also have um, wounds of your own from childhood, from family, from other timelines. So I started to look last week at things that may have occurred for my journey that might still be running. And some of it, what I realized, what the message I was getting on the weekend was some of the masculines have still been carrying around the warrior program, um, defend, defending, arguing, war, all of that. And as feminines, we may not be experiencing this in our lifetime, some of you might, but in, in, as feminines, we may have been a warrior in another timeline. So we're, we're carrying that energy. So we too are healing and closing and that as well. The message I got on the weekend is a lot of the warriors are weary. They're tired. They don't want to fight anymore. They want to sit and rest. They want to put their armor down and be at peace and be at inner peace. So everyone is at a different point of their journey, but some masculines and feminines, you're tired of the fight. You just want to be at peace now and it's okay. You're allowed to do that. You're allowed to put the armor down. And some have, have been gone into like, um, like a internal mode of healing and want, just want quiet time and want to, to find their own tools for healing. Um, some are like so weary from battle, they might just drop off the face of the earth. So you may have had like a connection with your twin or connection with some people and suddenly they're just not around, they're not available because they're healing their wounds and they don't even know what they're, why they're healing. And the other message I, I received is that those warriors and goddesses who, who've been through all of that, uh, we've been closing and clearing other timelines related to those energies and that a lot of us have healed that and we're ready to move on. So that's some of the deep work that I was doing on the weekend, getting messages around that. Um, and we all have experienced that. We've all been in some type of battle, whether it's been a personal battle or a battle on another timeline related to any, any sort of civilization where, where we would have been involved in, you know, fight for land, etc. Now on the, what came to me as well is like on the twin flame journey, some twins are, are dealing with the wound of maybe having to go off to battle and not being, have not, were not able to return. Um, and then the other twin is dealing with the wounding around that about feeling abandoned. Abandonment is a deep core wound for twin flames, for divine partnerships, for all of us. Um, but it is getting easier now to connect to source energy to help you feel, fill yourself up every day. So we're getting a lot of practice at that and we're gonna be getting a lot more practice before the solstice gateway, okay? So I wanted to share about that and that literally another wave of masculines or feminines that have been going through the warrior program are ready to release that and let it go so their, their hearts can open more. So our, our goal, all of us is to do whatever you need to do to keep your heart open. Do whatever you need to do. So I woke up this morning feeling collectively that the masculines are incredibly sad. So some of you masculines may be feeling that too. You may come across my video going, oh my God, I've been feeling so sad. I felt that too. And my guidance this morning is guidance for all of us. Um, I pulled some cards for myself like I do every day. And I'm going to share them. I was guided that I can share them with all of you. I already shared them with one friend. So the first thing I heard, and this is going to be a prep for all these gateways. And you make up your own list that will work for you. So the first card I pulled was number 32, music. And uh, you're gonna all gonna love this. So I immediately heard the riff to Life in the Fast Lane by the Eagles. And I was like, oh God, I love that. So I've created new lists on Spotify or whatever you listen to. So shake it up, shift up your music, find music that's gonna make you smile and just lift your energy. That's what, this morning, that's what I heard. I heard, put music on. And I did that, and um, and I'm also creating new Spotify lists. So that's uh, something that I wanted to share with all of you. If you've got music that's not helping you right now, create a new music list. Okay, so music was the first one. By the way, when I put my Spotify, um, when I put it on to play and I put it on shuffle, uh, my higher self and my team brought me Life in the Fast Lane. That's the first uh, song that they brought, and I was like, yes. So I really that really moved the energy for me today. That, so this is sort of, I might as well do this now. This is a list to prepare you for all gateways every day to help you shift your energy. You come up with your own list. These are just suggestions, but this is how all of us are going to shift the lower vibrational energy from hanging on within and without us. So, you know, every single one of us has this programming in us and 
energy around from the collective, that's sadness, that's grief, that's depression, that's anger. We don't have to participate with it. And it's super important right now as we're going through these, these times to keep our vibration high. So music, any form of music that you like, hopefully high vibrational music, um, create if a, if a playlist or music is not doing it for you, shift to something else, okay? Uh, physical activity was the next card that came forward my way. Yoga, dance, walking, gym, um, whatever works for you, some type of movement because that is going to physically move the energy through you. Plus drinking, drinking water, I'm going to drink some water. Water will move toxins and not only hydrate you, but it will move toxins, move belief systems, move things out of your energy field in your physical body. So, so drink lots of good water. Um, the next card that came forward as well was number 11, which is the union, individuality. This is a time for a lot of us to be sovereign. So there are gifts in separation or a disconnect from your twin flame or your beloved or a, group, or a family or anything. If you feel like you need to retreat and not spend time or not be in contact with certain people, it's your sovereign right. It's time to just be an individual and take care of yourself. I've been pulling back more and more. I'm not communicating with as many people right now because I need time in between videos and sessions to rest and regroup right now. That's how intense the light codes are, okay? And then the last two messages. This is for all of us, whether you're masculine or feminine. Follow your dreams. So if you don't know what your dreams are, think about what they are. If they've only ever included a twin flame or a partner, then it's time to regroup and go, what are my dreams? What do I wish for? You know, start thinking about that because it doesn't mean that the twin flame union or reunion won't happen, but you're being given a, a time now to show that you're creating your own reality and that you can create an awesome reality. And that's what's been coming to me over and over again as well. And then finally, I was got to show this one to find this card, Manifestation 8, the infinity symbol. You are all magnificent creators and you're manifesting your own reality. So if we focus on low vibrational beliefs and systems, that's what we're going to create. If we focus on, you know, dream big, dream of whatever you wish, no matter what your current circumstances and work towards that. And that's what you want to manifest. And you're going to manifest it by keeping your vibe high, keeping this physical body healthy, exercising, some kind of movement, music, anything, you know, uh, binaural beats, all of that. So we've got, we're being guided to use our tools. Yes, meditation, of course, um, not, not everyone can sit and meditate. Uh, especially if you're a star seed. If you're a star seed, you have a lot of internal energy to burn off. So I would say like running, walking, going to the gym, you're still going to get your answers. At some point, you're going to be able to sit still and meditate. But if you've got a lot of energy to burn off, find some really positive way for your physical body to do that. Okay. All right. So I wanted to share that and I'll review that again at the end. So I, yeah, so we're clearing the warrior timelines. We're also clearing the waiting timelines. That kind of goes with the story that I was just sharing. So we're clearing, um, let's say in another reality, you, you and your twin, something happened to split you up and one of you ended up waiting or promising to wait for the other and it just never happened and that reality is still running. So when I offer, when I do the Akashic healing sessions, that's what I offer now, that's a big chunk of my work. What happens is we, for the highest good, we work on clearing and closing any timelines that might be preventing abundance, your soul mission, your twin flame reunion, um, your manifestation abilities, all of that. There's so many things that are happening on so many levels right now. So I'm like a liaison to help with all of that. So I did want to share that with you that I too uncovered some timelines where I was waiting and they're now closed and I didn't know that they were there. And how this comes to me is the more I share, the more I assist and help all of you, another piece of the puzzle comes in. It comes in for all of us. So I'm so grateful for that. Okay. So like I said, a lot of us are going through a lot of heart healing. Um, and collectively I felt today, uh, that the divine masculines, you in general, you're healing a lot of, um, sadness and depression and that's being released into the collective. And I, I actually felt some of that as well and cleared that away too. So, because we all came into these physical suits that had the same programs, whether we had experienced it in our family or not, it could have been in the family bloodline. So things like depression, anger, grief, addictions, all of that is part of the package that we agreed to come and bust and clear. Okay. 
So yes, I, I'm right there along with all of you. I'm busting and clearing. Some of us are just doing a little bit ahead, so we have the tools to assist and help you, okay? All right, let me see. If anyone has any questions as well, uh, type them in and I will, I will answer. So the 6-6 Gateway will be a collective opportunity to um, unify, amplify, upgrade, integrate, especially those of you who are Twin Flames, it's an important gateway. This whole month of June is an important uh, month for Twins. It is the Gemini energy. It is, and the Gemini energy is about Twins. So a lot of it may be, some of you will be ready to come together and reconnect, but for some of you, it might just be unification, more of the Divine Feminine Masculine for preparation. I feel there's gonna be more unions after the solstice more than prior because I feel like all the energy and integration before the solstice has to do with us all quantum jumping to that next timeline and level. Um, more people on the planet being awake, more of our consciousness expanding, more of our intuitive abilities coming online. I feel like July is going to be a, a better month for some twins to reconnect, okay? So let me just make sure I want to make sure. Oh, okay. So um, let's just talk about some of these gateways. So the 6-6 six, six gateway is a 5D, another crossroads, another timeline. And I was got to just draw a little diagram today. I'm not much of an artist, but it's like imagine yourself on a freeway and there's some exits to get off at. Are you going to keep going? Do you have enough steam to keep going or do you need to get off at an exit? And it's perfectly fine to get off at an exit. As a matter of fact, if our belief system thinks if we get off, it's going to take longer, that's what you're going to manifest. But in actual fact, if we get off an exit, we may actually find a shortcut and jump timelines and get to our what, what we're manifesting sooner because we're taking care of ourselves. So examples of exits to get off um, at this time, and these are gifts. You can also look at this as gifts of separation from your twin flame. Maybe you've been let go of from a job. Maybe you're not connecting with your family. Maybe you're removing yourself from a group of friends. Gifts of separation at this time, self-love. Taking care of yourself, self-love mastery, that's also taking care of your health. Your physical body will guide you in every moment what it needs. And, um, and if it's off track, you're being given time to get it back on track. It, another exit is freedom. You're being given a gift of time and freedom to focus on yourself and your journey and get your ducks in a row, get everything in order. Another exit might be soul mission. Um, it's time for you to start your soul mission. What do I want that to look like? Oh, I'm being given time for that. I have time to breathe. For some of you, it's a gift of your intuitive gifts. You're going to have time to start honing in your intuition and your guidance. And that's another thing that I offer you as well. I give you the power to work with your higher self. I give that back to you. You all have that in you. Some of you just need a little guidance as to how to get there. And that's what I offer all of you as well. Um, yeah, so there's many, many gifts. Like I said, it's, life is not just getting on the freeway and going and going and going. We will have interruptions to take us off course, but we're not really being taken off course. We're actually being redirected by source in the universe, by our higher self. No, no, go this way. This is a better way, okay? That's making choices. That's when, um, as an example, this whole journey has helped me zone in now to go within. And even if I'm having a conversation with someone, I will have a conversation with someone and be going within saying, this doesn't feel right. What is my guidance? And as an example, two weeks ago or so, someone came into my reality and I could tell that they were on drugs and their vibration was actually starting to make me feel quite sick. And I was talking to them, I was being kind to them, but internally I was asking my higher self, what's the best option for, for me right now? And I, I was given, wrap it up and you need to move along. So that's what I did. Because we're not here to rescue people. I always, you know, I think I even said, I asked that higher self and team of light to help this soul, you know, um, on their journey. But yeah, we, we are all here and being guided 24 seven, but we have to be in the now, we have to be going slow. That's it for some of you, the exits might be to get you to start slowing down so you can hear your guidance. So you do have time to go to nature, take care of yourself, go to yoga, um, all of that. So th there's many, many gifts right now from um, our realities changing, okay? So I wanted to share that with you that came in loud and clear. Okay, I did also pull a couple of cards today for Divine Feminines and Masculines just to give everyone an idea. Um, and chakras. So why don't I go through those? Um, 
So divine feminines, besides the heart healing, your the third eye and the sh sacral. It was really important for me to share about this today. This has been so key for myself and many of you. As our sacral chakra is elevating and healing, it's releasing belief systems about uh, relationships and sexuality, all of that. It's connected to the third eye. And many of you may have been going through sinus issues like I have. So I was given information this weekend, it's not just me, that many of us, as we're elevating our sacral, the third eye is also opening more. And it's, there have been some sinus issues, but that they will eventually um, balance out. Like mine have been going on for about a month. I will feel an energy merge with my twin and then it will be reactivated again. Um, but it's less and less like I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. So I just want to let you all know that they are connected, that the sacral, this is about us being a goddess and choosing ourselves and choosing uh, love and creativity and uh, breaking those patterns of part old partnerships. And it's going to activate the third eye and your intuition. Okay, so that came forward for Divine Feminines. And also Archangel Michael came in with the message of sovereignty. And that's that individuality card that came forward for all of us. It is a time. Yeah. It, oh, I just lost a card. It is a time for us to be uh, individuals and sovereign. And everything's going to, to work out fine. Not to focus so much on... Um, if you have a partner or you don't have a partner right now, you have more to do. You're here to receive, you know, guidance, uh, intuition, um, get every, get your, like I said, get your ducks in a row. Okay. So that's the Archangel Michael. Many of you like to work with him. He's working with all of you right now. If you choose to, to work with him to help you stay, uh, your energy field to stay sealed and protected as the last reading, um, shields up always make sure you're clearing them sealing your energy up you can check into the violet flame or the blue flame lots of people have created videos on YouTube and you can always ask Archangel Michael to come in and, and help um, seal your energy as well I have to do that after every session I call it archiving um, and I have to make sure before I go out that I'm sealed up because I live in a very busy area and I make sure that I um, clear when I come home as well okay and let me see uh, where was I? I get kind of, I get distracted by, thank you for the hearts, everyone. That's amazing. I get distracted by the colors. They're so fun. Okay. For masculines, you received the third eye too. He, it came twice, twice. So intuition and faith, and they're connected. So masculines, for your intuitive abilities to come online, um, you're releasing belief systems around faith. Um, we've been given a lot of of belief systems from family, from our country, from religions, all of that. And a lot of you are looking in that right now. That's removing boxes. Your abilities will open up once some of the belief systems dissolve. So some of you masculines are being hit quite hard right now because the, it came forward twice or you will be for your third eye to open. And the, I love this card, the soul star. So I talk about this. This is the Akashic belief systems. That's what I was just sharing about. So releasing the belief systems, release anything that's not bringing you joy, any belief system that's not bringing you joy, really look at everything, really, if something pops into your mind, this is, goes for all of us, go, where did that come from? What is that? Well, and then you think, oh my gosh, that's probably something that my parents said. And they're like, well, that's not my belief system anymore. And I help you bust through that. We want to get to joy. We want to stay at the frequency of joy, the very high frequency of joy. Okay. Um, all right tarot cards for everyone so great messages for all of us this was a reading um that i was guided that i was able to give for everyone today because i just pulled the cards this morning so divine feminines uh, archangel shamuel came in looking at everything with fresh eyes like just like what i shared so these waves uh, the codes come in the waves of light come in our chakras open up more and suddenly we're seeing everything and we're feeling everything in a different way so and shamuel is about the um the heart about the the relationships the new partnerships but seeing everything in a new way. So we're going to be having partnerships in a new way. We're going to not be uh, able to pull energy like in a 3D relationship. We're still going to be able to feel that beautiful energy with that soul, but we're being guided every day to connect to source every day and fill up that way. And that's what we're, we're practicing. Um, Ace of Ariel came forward. Abundance, self-love, spending time in nature, new beginnings, okay? And it is about um, new resources for money, time, support, making some changes and trusting in your dreams and, and moving forward with your soul missions. Um, and 
new beginnings, like amazing messages for everyone, okay? So this is another, another week, and every day is a new beginning, but this is just a reminder of every day is a new beginning, every day is a reset, and you're getting another reset point this week with the 6-6 six, six gateway, okay? Masculines as well, just what I've been sharing with the chakra messages. So um, main message is emotional loss, so a lot of you are doing a lot of heart healing right now, and five is about transition and transformation. So, you know, the thing with wounding is we can't outrun it. It goes with us wherever we go. So as an example, and this came from some of my beautiful galactic soul brothers, I sat in nature yesterday and I just said to Source, I'm ready. If there's any wounds in my heart, if there are any little swords still in my heart, please remove them. I want, wish to be free and I wish this for all of, all of you. And um, for masculines, if you are going through any kind of emotional loss, it's to help you transition. It's to help you heal and move on and become more of, of who you are, okay? So just feel and get through it as best you can. Uh, but that's what I felt this morning. I felt this emotional loss um, from some of the masculine collective. When you get through that and you get through your healing and you realize that that is just old programming and your um, awakening and your hearts are opening, uh, you're at a zero reset point, new beginnings, which came through for the, the last reading, you're at another reset point. We always are and Source is trying to work with you. Source and the universe are trying to work with you. You have a higher self. You easily can connect to Source and the universe. We all can. It just takes practice because we've spent the majority of this lifetime having to trust and have faith in it, but now we're going to actually be able to tangibly feel it and manifest it, okay? So just a reminder of be very, very conscious of what you're manifesting because some of us are instant manifestors now and you don't want to manifest a low vibrational um, reality. You want to think big and think awesome, all right? And that's what I've been working on too. So I'm super excited. Um, does anybody have any questions? Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I appreciate all of you too. Thank you. I, you know, what's interesting is I, I had shared last week that I was going to pull some sacred geometry messages for everyone. <laughs> Two of the same cards came out. So I'm just going to show them again. I'm not going to read them because I've done them previously. But the conception card came out. So that's an activation for all of you. It's number 16. And it is just about inviting us to bring, um, it's about infinite potential and possibilities. All right. So that one came out. It came out a couple weeks ago. The Synergy card came out, number 41, which adds up to a five. And I'm just going to read. Um, it just It's just a reminder that um, never seen before combinations and unions will result in new and magical ways. Okay, so we're supposed to, uh, even with, um, even if you've had your higher self tell you something about how the union is going to go or your angels or your team, uh, um, just allow whatever is supposed to come to come and just allow it to be even better than what, you, what you've been told or what you can imagine, okay? So that's what the synergy is about. It's, about. it's about amazing, unbelievable possibilities that we never even thought of. And then finally, I love this because eight, eight alchemy came forward, which eight is the infinity symbol. It is about manifestation. It is about being alchemists. It is about... Um, manifesting and creating amazing lifetimes and days and weeks and years okay so i'll read this one to you all the frequency of alchemy activates our magical ability and remembering of the magic that we all hold inside each one of us has the potential to access the ancient knowledge that allowed the true alchemist to perform the miracles of transmutation i would say and also of manifestation all right so just take a look at that so beautiful Really, really awesome. Wonderful. So I think that that's it. Unless I, I, will, I will go up and see if anyone has any questions. If you have a question, type it in. Um, again, if you wish a session or reading, I've extended the specials, the weekend specials, till Thursday the 7th. You can check out my website. I ha still believe I have one or two spots before the solstice, but I definitely have um, time at the end of the month. And I'm sending love and aloha to all of you. And I'm just going to go and check to see if anybody has any questions. I'm glad that the volume is working. Um, so Low Bright is just saying, yes, sinus stuff. Yes, there's been a lot of sinus. Um, I haven't had a sinus infection since I was a teenager. I had one for three weeks that I actually had to do a lot of work around to clean up. So I was, I, I was just guided today that I was able to share that. You're welcome. You're welcome. 
Um, Tree Life is saying, is your twin flame your soulmate? No, they're two different energies. It's okay, Tree Life. Twin flame is like a really fairly recent term. Um, I didn't even, had never even heard of the term until 2010. Uh, twin flame information didn't really start getting channeled until 2013, but even that we, has changed. If you even go back to any of the videos I created in 2016, there's been a lot more information that has shifted and changed even from my perspective and reality. We came in as um, high frequency beings to not only be a twin flame, but to bust belief systems around everything and templates around everything. And a lot of the twin flame templating is to be in unconditional love and to help to share that and create that with other people. A soulmate is often someone that, to come in to be a companion that you want to journey through life with. Which And the soulmate connection is, a, believe it or not, is a lot easier than the twin flame connection. The twin flame connection would be a, a much higher frequency. Both beings are like amped up to a very, very high voltage. And when twins try to be together, the mirroring of the wounds is so bright and so strong. It's really, really difficult for twin. That's why a lot of twins haven't reunited yet. It is, it's exciting, but there's a lot of fear there as well because the energy is so different. Uh, when I met my twin, I remember thinking, what is this energy? Like it's, it, it was, it was exciting, but it scared me. And I know that it scared him. Um, it's, it took us, uh, six years of ebb and flow to be able to spend time together without both of us wanting to run for the hills. So that's sort of, um, the difference and no, not everybody there, you know, there are a lot of people out there saying everyone has a twin. That's not true. We are unifying the divine feminine and masculine within us all. That might be one way of looking at it. If you're looking for a partnership and you want a high vibrational partnership, I like to call those divine unions. And I feel that that twin flames um, have been preparing the consciousness for that, for a new way to look at partnerships and unions. But from my reality, a uh, twin flame is like two so sovereign beings on their journey that choose to be together. Um, you know, a soulmate might, a soulmate, a lot of souls, you might be married to your soulmate or you might have children with your soulmate. That's already happened. Uh, twin flames didn't actually sort of start to get activated and come um, online and start coming together until 2013. So the percentage of twins on the planet is the most we've ever had, but there, I would say there's not a huge vast amount of twins that are together yet. There are twins that have had tried to come together and have had to separate. It's about frequency. It's about, if you think about it, if I'm at, you know, 150 amps and my twin is only at 50 amps because he's just gone through something horrendous, that is not going to go well. And I've experienced all of that. I've experienced, I've been low, he's been high. He's been low, I've been high. And it's been horrendous. It's been awful. So the higher cells of the twin flames will bring the twins together to either connect, meet, or be able to stay together when the vibrational match is there. Okay. There's going to be a lot more information. Yeah. There's going to be a lot more information coming forward about those unions. They, um, I do feel too that twins like powerhouse twins that come together, the anchoring of that light is, is important to the gridding of the planet. So that's also being prepared. Yeah. There's a lot, <laughs> a lot of people think the, the twin flame connection is romantic and that's, that can be part of it, but there's a whole other um, aspect to twin flame journeys. That's for sure. So yeah, it's not an easy journey. I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose it consciously. Uh, sometimes myself and many of us have thought, what have we done to choose this? It's been a, a, often a very solitary journey, but um, there's been so many gifts along the way that I appreciate. I'm so grateful that I can share what I've learned and what has come through for uh, me as well. So anyway, I'm going to sign off everyone. Thank you so, so much for um, this live. I look forward to connecting with you in session and or the next transmission. All right. Have a beautiful day and week, everyone. Happy 6-6 Gateway. Love and aloha from Pink Bella. Bye.